dear students today we will be starting the module 11 which is primarily on energy storage systems. So, in this lecture we will discuss the need of energy storage systems followed by brief introduction of all the schemes of energy storage systems which are used in power plants and primarily we will be discussing today about the thermal energy storage system and its analysis. Now, let us learn why energy storage system, what is the need of energy storage system. As we know the demand for electricity varies hourly, daily and seasonally and the supply is constant as per the installed capacity of the power plant. Now, need is to offset the adverse effect of fluctuating demand for electricity and to ensure steady output from existing power plants. So, if we look into this figure, what we can see this line straight line represents the supply and this curve represents the demand. So, if we see A B that means the area under the line A B and then C D these are the situations when demand is less, but we have supply and if we see B C this part. So, demand is high and supply is less. So, what we can do during the less demand period for this region and this region we can store energy and then when there is a demand we can provide the energy. So, in order to store this energy we need appropriate energy storage schemes based on the situation. So, that is how we will be discussing the different schemes for energy storage systems in this lecture. And here in summary you can say when demand is less than or equal to capacity then energy will be stored and when demand is greater than or equal to capacity then energy is released. So, these are the primary schemes by which energy can be stored, thermal energy storage, electrochemical energy storage, mechanical energy storage, magnetic energy storage, chemical energy storage and hydrogen storage. And there are some important parameters which tells about the suitability of a particular storage scheme. These are nothing but temperature range of applications, energy density, then minimum heat loss, cost, efficiency, environmental impact. Now, let us have a look about the various possibilities of storage. Say, for example, we have primary energy storage and then our target is to produce electricity and the same time we will have some kind of thermal energy. So, if the demand is as per the supply then we can straight away provide the energy which is generated by a best load power plant to the load center or load. If the utilization is less that means, demand is less then what we can do we can think of some kind of storage system. So, this excess energy or excess electricity can be stored in different ways it may be electromechanical or may be direct. So, under electromechanical we will have potential energy based like pumped hydro, compressed air, springs and under kinetic energy it may be flywheel and under direct schemes we have storage batteries and superconductive 
magnets. And then when there is a demand, the stored energy can be released and supplied to the load. Similar thing happens in case of thermal energy storage. If we can connect the load which is the same as the amount of energy we have generated in the form of thermal energy, otherwise we can store in different schemes like sensible heat storage, latent heat storage and chemical reaction storage. And when the energy is required during the peak demand, this energy can be released and given to the grid or maybe the localized load centers. So now we will be discussing the schemes one by one. So before we picked up the discussion on thermal energy storage today, we need to have some kind of important information like technical and economical advantages of energy storage in terms of energy transfer, network efficiency and kinetic advantage. As far as energy transfer is concerned, the storage offers backup during temporary outage and predictable during peak demand. And for network efficiency which helps accommodate and manage the sensing energy demands leading to more optimized infrastructure planning. What kind of advantage we get? The flexibility of future storage and retrieval system can provide instant response to demand and add flexibility to the network in terms of load leveling. So there are some characteristics of energy storage techniques like storage capacity. This is the quantity of available energy in the storage system after charging. Autonomy which is very very important which refers to the maximum amount of time the system can continuously release energy. And then power transmission rate or depth of discharge is the delivery rate determines the time needed to extract the stored energy. Mass and volume density of energy is also one of the important characteristics. This represents the maximum amount of energy accumulated per unit of mass or volume of storage unit. Also we need to mention about discharge time, efficiency and durability. Discharge time is the maximum power discharge duration and efficiency is the ratio between release energy and stored energy. Cycle capacity is something like number of times the storage unit can release the energy level it was designed for after each recharge. So sometimes this may not be applicable for all kind of energy storage systems. So this figure shows the different storage technologies according to storage systems. For example, if we are interested to have a storage unit of capacity 1 kilowatt, then we will have to choose something like supercapacitor or maybe small electrochemical batteries. And if we think of a very large scale energy storage systems, maybe its capacity varies from 100 to 1000 megawatt, then of course we need to select either pumped hydro energy storage systems or compressed air energy storage system. Right? So that way this figure gives an idea about selection of appropriate technology based on the capacity. Now let us discuss about thermal energy storage systems. Thermal energy storage systems primarily classified into three classes, sensible heat, latent heat and thermochemical storage. It may be liquid and solid in case of 
since you will have for latent heat it may be solid liquid or liquid gaseous system and for thermochemical storage we can have two classes again sorption storage and chemical storage again sorption can be divided into two groups absorption storage and adsorption storage. So, what are the basic methods for storing thermal energy? Sensible heat storage that is the amount of energy stored is dependent on temperature change of the material. So, here we are not talking about change of phase. Say for example, if we need to heat water from 20 degree to 80 degree, so there is no change of phase. So, that heat we call it as sensible heat. Mathematically, this can be represented by E is equal to m integration of T1 to T2 Cp dt. Okay? So, dt is nothing but the temperature swing or temperature difference. And second class is latent heat storage that is heating a liquid or solid which undergoes a change of phase. It may be from solid to liquid or may be from liquid to gas during the charging and discharging reverse may happen. So, something like the condensation of vapor to the liquid and then liquid to the solid. So, the amount of energy stored is dependent on mass and latent heat of fusion or may be latent heat of evaporation of the material and storage operates isothermally at melting point of the material. So, mathematically we can write E is equal to m into L, m is the mass of the material, L is the latent heat. Again in case of thermochemical storage, it uses heat to induce a certain chemical reaction and then storing the products the heat is released when the reverse reaction is made to occur. So, if we consider sensible heat storage system, it has advantages like it is very simple in operation, but disadvantages like we need bigger in size means volume will increase and it cannot store or deliver energy at constant temperature. And we can use plenty of material like water, heat transfer oil, inorganic molten salts, rocks, pebbles and refractories. Just for your understanding, water being used for temperature below 100 degree Celsius, but the refractory bricks being used for temperature around 1000 degree Celsius. So, in this system, it is very important to know this heat capacity, which is one of the important criteria in selecting a material for this scheme. Okay? So, it is represented mathematically by rho into Cp. Rho is the density of the material and Cp is the specific heat of the material. There are different ways of storing sensible heat energy like pressurized water storage, organic liquid storage, picked solid bed storage, then fluidized bed storage. So, we can see the properties of sensible heat storage material. We can have plenty of material here and the second column is the specific heat, third is density and then fourth column is volumetric specific heat. If we see say for example, rock pebbles having specific heat of 0 0.88 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and density is 1600 kg per cubic meter and volumetric specific heat is about 1410 kilojoule per cubic meter Kelvin and for water specific heat is about 4.18 kilojoule per kg Kelvin density is 1000 kg per cubic meter and volumetric specific heat is about 4180 
kilojoule cubic meter Kelvin. So, if we note it carefully, the water has three times more heat capacity than rock on a volume basis. So, it means rock requires three times more volume than water to store the same amount of sensible heat. So, it is a deciding parameter. So, which material to be used for a particular application. Let us see the scheme how this energy storage system has been applied in power plant. Suppose if you have a primary heat source and this is designed for base load applications maybe. So, during the off peak hours the demand is less. So, during that time what happened? The steam which is goes to the turbine we can extract at certain condition and that can be accumulated in the steam accumulator and this will be under saturated condition. And whenever we require then we allow to pass through in a flux evaporator where pressure is at lower condition and it is something like throttling. So, it will produce lot of steam and this will be expanded in a picking turbine and we can produce electricity. So, that means we have primary cycle for generation of electricity and when there is a less demand then part of the steam can be used for storage and we can use it when there is a requirement. So, this is picking turbine or picking cycle, this is picking turbine. Okay. So, in nutshell what you can say the unutilized steam can be extracted from the base load plant during low demand and excess steam is extracted and fed to the steam accumulators and in accumulators steam is mixed with water which produces saturated pressurized water. The accumulators are later discharged through picking turbine during peak hours. Now, there are different ways of operation of accumulators. It may be variable pressure accumulator, it may be expansion accumulator or may be displacement accumulator. So, in all the cases what happens steam comes in and mixed with water. So, it becomes hot water and this will be at saturated condition. And both surging and discharging is done from the top. So, this may be discharging and this may be for surging. And while discharging it has to pass through a throttle valve. And then it goes to picking turbine. Now, let us discuss more on it like storage density of a sensible energy storage system. It can be represented by rho, C p and d t. d t is nothing but the theta here which is the temperature difference and rho is the density of the material which is represented in kg per cubic meter and C p is the specific heat which is represented in kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So, the typical values of accumulator high and low pressure are 20 bar and 2 bar. So, 20 bar means the saturation temperature is about 212 degree Celsius and at 2 bar the saturation temperature is about 120 
degrees Celsius. And also we need to define one very important term called storage density. The storage density of thermal energy utilized in the peaking turbine per unit volume of the high pressure saturated water is given by 1 by V f 1 in bracket H f 1 minus H f 2. So, here V f and H f are specific heat and enthalpy of saturated water and this 1 and 2 refers to high and low pressure. This is for high pressure and 2 is for low pressure. So, for this case 20 bar and 2 bar of high and low pressures in the accumulators, the storage density will be somewhat like because V f 1 at 2 bar and saturated temperature of 120 degree Celsius, we have a value of 0 0.0011766 and enthalpy at 20 bar is 908.5. So, we need to refer the table property table or here we can use steam table for 8. So, 504.8 is the enthalpy is at 2 bar. So, this comes to be 343107 kilo joule per cubic meter. So, approximately what we can say it is about 95.3 kilowatt hour per cubic meter and this delta T is something like 212 minus 120 it will be 92 degree C. That means, storage density is approximately 1 kilowatt hour per cubic meter per degree Celsius over the temperature range. So, this is something like if we say 95.3 divided by 92. So, it will be approximately 1 kilowatt hour per cubic meter per degree Celsius. So, the electrical energy density obtained by picking turbine generator depends on number 1 thermal turnaround efficiency which is represented by eta T A and picking turbine generator efficiency. And this eta T A that means thermal turnaround efficiency is a function of losses associated with heat transfer to and from the steel tanks, structural membranes or structural members of the accumulators and interconnecting pipes and also the transient heat losses to the environment. So, this thermal turnaround efficiency of sensible heat storage is dependent on heat losses associated with sensible heat transfer from the storage vessel and transient heat losses to the environment in particular. By doing analysis, it can be demonstrated that the convective heat losses are the major contributor which vary with time 
water temperature and overall heat transfer coefficient. Now, let us consider a condition of something like this, maybe water is filled here in the accumulator and let the volume of the accumulator be V and rho is the density and T is at certain temperature and T infinity is the ambient temperature and let the area of the system may be A. And also we consider let theta is nothing but T minus T infinity. Okay? So, that what you can get d theta is equal to d t. Now, by assuming lumped capacity system with low biot number, what we can write the rate of decrease of internal energy of water is equal to the rate of heat loss to the surroundings. So, mathematically we can write rho f v c f d theta by d t is equal to minus u a theta. So, we can simplify this expression d theta by theta is equal to minus u a rho f v c f. So, here rho is the density v is the volume C is the specific heat of the fluid. So, here d t is present. So, this may be we can write equation 1. So, what we can do here by integrating that means ln of theta is equal to minus u a rho f v c f t plus c is the equation 2. So, at t is equal to 0 what will happen theta will be equal to theta naught and then if we use this in equation 2 then what will happen? substituting this value t is equal to 0 and c will be ln of theta naught. Again if we use this c value in equation 2 then again ln of theta is equal to minus u a rho f v c f into t plus ln of theta naught. So, it will be something like ln of theta by theta naught is equal to minus u a rho f v c f and finally, what you can do here theta by theta naught is equal to 
exponential of minus e v divided by rho f v c f right. So, this is something like theta by theta naught is equal to t minus t infinity which is already defined here and then you have t i minus t infinity. Okay. This is initial condition e to the power of minus u a rho f v c f. So, this may be equation number this is equal to 3. Right? Now, we can define a term called time constant. So, let us define time constant by tau which is equal to rho f v c f divided by u into a. So, now if we expand it further like rho f multiplied by c f, then if we write the volume of the accumulator, it is something like pi d square by 4 into L. This is the diameter of the accumulator multiplied by 1 by u multiplied by it is a surface area pi d L. Okay. So, if we simplify further, if we simplify further then what you will get the time constant tau is equal to d rho f c f divided by 4 into u. So, this may be equation number 4. Right. Now, we recall the equation 3 and use this tau in the equation, then how the equation look like? Equation 3 implies it is t minus t infinity divided by t i minus t infinity is equal to e to the power of minus t by tau. Now, we can rearrange it and what we will get say for example, if we subtract this term from 1 t minus t infinity and then t i minus t infinity is equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus t by tau and then what you will get finally is t minus t i divided by t infinity minus t i which will be equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus t by tau. After doing this we need to multiply this entire term by minus 1 then we will get this term. So, this will be equation number 5. Fine. Now, once we have then we can see the situation with heat loss and without heat loss. For example, I can draw a figure if liquid temperature we write in the vertical axis and time in the horizontal axis. And if no heat loss is taking place that means, it is straight line no heat loss is taking place. And if there is a heat loss then this will be something like this. So, if it is T 1 and if our sensible heat temperature up to T 2 it is targeted and if we draw intermediate temperature T s at certain temperature T s right this is time 
So, this condition is no heat loss condition and this is with heat loss. Okay. Fine. So, if we consider this T i is T 1, then we can write this expression something like replacing T i by T 1. So, it is T minus T 1, then T infinity minus T 1 is equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus T by tau. Okay. This may be equation 6. So, during this condition, the storage period of T s at which the temperature decreases to T s. So, this is the storage time, this is small t and temperature is T s. So, under this condition, then again this equation can be further modified into T s minus T 1, then T infinity minus T 1, which is equal to 1 minus e to the, e to the power of minus T by tau. So, here T can be replaced by T s. Okay. So, this may be equation number 7. Now, we can define the thermal turn around efficiency So, this can be defined as eta T a, it is like energy left in storage at T s. So, this should be after heat loss. to the original energy stored. Okay. So, mathematically we can write it something like H s minus H 2 divided by H 1 minus H 2 and in terms of temperature we can write T s minus T 2 then T 1 minus T 2. Okay. Further this can be rearranged and we can write something like eta T A is equal to 1 minus T S minus T 2 divided by T 1 minus T 2. So, while doing lot of senses, then what we can write is something like eta T a minus T 1 minus T infinity divided by T 1 minus T 2 1 minus e to the power of minus T s by tau. So, this may be equation number 8. Okay. So, from this mathematical expression, it is seen that this thermal turn around efficiency is strongly depends on the ratio of T s by tau. Okay. And this T s is something like several hours in a day in a storage system. Okay. It may be 10 hours, it may be 12 hours, maybe 13 hours, something like that. And only variable remains is tau. So, in that tau, again variable is only u, okay. which is nothing but the heat transfer coefficients. So, again 
this u is heavily dependent on accumulator insulations. And also design and location. Okay. So, higher the values of tau will result in lower the values of u. Okay. Normally, if we compare two different situations, one is above ground and other one is underground. So, underground thermal turnaround efficiency is always more than overground because of heavier insulation and higher temperature then the plant which is installed overground and also choice of this system depends on cost efficiency or personal problem and safety right so these were the very important aspects we need to know while designing a sensible heat energy storage system. Also, we must know this peaking efficiency, okay. eta p a, it works at variable inlet condition. Okay. So, its efficiency is not that much. If we get an efficiency of about uh, 25 to 30 percent or maybe 20 to 25 percent is ok. But the plan which is normally installed for meeting the base load, its efficiency varies from 30 to 35 percent or maybe sometimes it can go up to 40 percent. Okay. So, we can discuss a problem in relation to this sensible heat energy storage system. In a pressurized water sensible heat storage system, steam is extracted from the turbine during off peak hours and fed into steel accumulators of volume 175,000 cubic meter. The accumulators are insulated to reduce the heat losses. The diameter of each accumulator is given as 4 meter the maximum and minimum storage pressure is given as 20 bar and 2 bar respectively. We need to consider the ambient temperature as 20 degree Celsius and heat transfer coefficient as 1.5 watt meter square Kelvin and turnaround efficiency is given as 94 percent and the peaking plant efficiency is 25 percent. Then we need to calculate storage time then total energy stored in the accumulator and total energy that can be delivered by the peaking turbine. So, these are things we need to find out and at 20 bar we can take the data from the steam table T 1 is 212.37 degree Celsius to be precise and enthalpy at that condition is 908.5 kilojoule per kg and specific volume is about 0 0.0011766 cubic meter per kg and at 2 bar we have saturation temperature is 120.23 degree Celsius then enthalpy 504.8 kilojoule per kg and a specific volume is about 0 0.010605 cubic meter per kg and ambient conditions is 20 degree and HF at the temperature is 293 kilojoule per kg. Okay. These are the given data. Now, by taking an average density of water by considering the specific volume at the two conditions at 20 bar and 2 bar, 
calculated to be about 896.43 cubic meter per kg. So, once we know this then we can find out the time constant value. which is represented by tau it is something like d rho f c f divided by 4 u. Okay. So, diameter is given to us is 4 meter and then density is 896.43 then we will have specific heat of water is 4.35 into 10 cube divided by 4 into u, u is 1.5 and then we need to multiply with 3600 then what we will get is the time constant in hour. Okay. So, once we have calculated this time constant then we can find out the ratio T s by tau by considering the thermal turnaround efficiency. So, the thermal turnaround efficiency which is represented by eta T a is equal to 1 minus T 1 minus T infinity divided by T 1 this is T a minus T infinity then we will have 1 minus e to the power of T s by tau. So, if we substitute the values 1 minus T 1 is 212.37 minus 20 then we have 212.37 minus 120.23 at that condition and then we will have 1 minus e to the power of T s by tau. Okay. So, we can do the calculations and we can find out the values of T s by tau which is equal to about 0 0.193. So, once we know these values then straight away you can calculate the storage time. Because already we know what is tau. So, this is T s is equal to 0 0.193 times tau. So, it will be 0 0.193 into 700.374 which is equal to 13.54 hours. Okay. So, now our next phase of calculation will be to find out what will be the mass. Okay. That means, mass of water needed to be flask. Okay. So, the mass of water needed to be flushed will be equal to we know the volume which is given to us is 175000 divided by V f 1. Okay. This is specific volume at condition 1. So, this is something like 0 0.0011766 and which is calculated to be 1.4873 into 10 to the power of 8 kg. So, if we have to find out the total energy stored in accumulator then we can do it now. 
the energy stored in the accumulator will be mass multiplied by the enthalpy sense H f 1 minus H f 2. Okay. So, this is something like 1.4873 multiplied by. So, we know the enthalpy is at 20 bar and 2 bar which are something like 908.5 and 504.8 respectively. So, if we substitute and do the calculation, so it is found to be 1667. So, here 10 to the power of 8 is missing 16678.4 megawatt hour. Okay. So, here if you see dimensionally it is kg and this is kilojoule per kg. So, this is gone. So, kilojoule remains we know joule per second is watt. So, that is how what we have done we have divided this entire expression by 3600 then what we get in terms of megawatt hour. Okay. So, now the this is the answer of second question. And for third question, the total energy that can be delivered by the picking turbine. So, here what we need to do? we need to consider the energy stored in the accumulator which is 16678.4 multiplied by the efficiencies of thermal turnaround and picking turbine. So, it will be 0 0.94 multiplied by 0 0.25. So, it will be about 3919.42 megawatt hour. Okay. So, in this problem we could able to get an idea how a sensible energy storage system can be designed under the condition given here. Normally that pressures are constant like maximum pressure is 20 bar and minimum pressure is 2 bar. So, at this condition the amount of energy which requires to be stored in the accumulator we have calculated and also if we know the turn around efficiency and the picking turbine efficiency then you can find out the total energy delivered by the picking turbine. Okay. So, now let us discuss about latent heat energy storage as I said in the latent heat energy storage system latent heat of fusion or evaporation is used for storage purposes. So, let us consider a power plant here. So, this is like helium cycle and when we have energy available like when we cannot provide the energy to the load during the off peak hours then we can use this technology for transferring to the heat to the phase change material right and then when there is a need we can use it for power generation. So, this is the cycle here. So, we can see here PCM what is used is the eutectic salt it is a mixture of organic and inorganic what is called material. So, during base load operation this helium from the reactor is short circuited directly to the helium water boiler. So, we have this is helium water boiler this is one cycle and this is the heat generation cycle and this is the lead cycle this lead takes the heat from the stored energy in the phase change material and then it exchanges heat with the water boiler and then 
it generates steam and produce electricity in the picking plant. Okay. So, specifically if we see during the base load operation helium from the reactor is short circuited directly to the helium water boiler and then during low thermal or say low demand period helium is shunted to the fuse salt reservoir this is the fuse salt reservoir okay. in the low demand only this is going to operate and during peak demand period this lead is circulated to the reservoir and leaving the PB water boiler. So, it delivers the heat to the water again water is converted to the steam and then next turbine is operated. So, condensate coming out of the turbine condenser system is fed back to the helium water boiler and during peak demand also to the PB water boiler via preheater okay. and then it goes to the preheater. Okay. So, it means what happens when there is a off peak hours then we can use the available energy to store in the phase sense process and when there is a peak demand that stored energy can be utilized for exchanging the heat with the water and we can produce steam and then we can expand in the turbine to generate electricity. It works something like this. Say for example, if we say solid ice the liquid you need to heat then first we need to heat it then there is a latent heat exchange or phase change will be there from solid to liquid and then we have sensible heat. So, it is something like this. So, this is the phase transition and this is the sensible part and again this is sensible part. So, what are the properties required for a PCM material? A melting point in the temperature range of the application for which it is being considered. Then a high value of the latent heat of fusion is essential. A small volume sense during the phase sense is also very very important. A negligible amount of super cooling or super heating or phase sense to occur and this properties should be stable and should not degrade after repeated cycle. This is one of the very important characteristics should be there in a phase sense material and it must have high thermal conductivity, low vapor pressure and non-corrosive. And if we plot enthalpy versus temperature it looks something like this. This case is for no phase sense that is sensible case and for latent heat. So, say for example, ice as temperature goes on increasing then what happens? There is a point where phase change will occur and then it will start heating again like a sensible heat storage. So, this is the enthalpy of fusion for the case of ice. And there are some benefits like higher storage density than sensible heat, smaller volume and smaller temperature changes between storing and releasing energy and drawbacks includes high cost corrosiveness is also important then density sense low thermal conductivity is one of the issues then phase separation incongruent melting and super cooling. So, we have many options of using phase change materials. So, you can see the list of compounds which melting temperature heat of fusion, thermal conductivities and density. So, we can select based on the applications of a particular process. Now, we can discuss something about thermochemical storage. It produces a certain endothermic chemical reaction and the products of reactions are stored. 
So, when the energy is required to be released, the reverse exothermic reaction is made to takes place. And this is suitable for high or medium temperature application only. So, some of the reactions are shown here, maybe methane reacts with water, it produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, temperature of forward reaction is about 780 and reverse reaction is about 610 and we can see the energy stored per unit volume of storage it is about 209.4 into 10 cube. And we can also consider some other reactions like SO3 how it is decomposes to SO2 and oxygen and the other compounds. So, based on the applications we can select which reactions to be considered in a particular power plant. So, again pictorially you can represent like if we have two elements here in the reactant side we will have two elements in the product side and if we have heat source then you can store the energy in a tank and in reverse reaction the stored energy can be released and we can produce the same reactant. Say for example, if we consider this methane reacts with H2O it produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen and this is exothermic reaction and carbon monoxide to hydrogen is endothermic reaction that means it requires heat. So, for the reactions from right to left from here to here for reaction from right to left at say 298 Kelvin and at one atmospheric pressure. So, if you write the energy balance then it will be something like H r plus Q is equal to H p. That means, this is enthalpy of the reactant plus Q is equal to enthalpy of the product. So, if you write down the enthalpy of formation of methane in our this reaction plus enthalpy of formation of H 2 O then Q it will be H F naught bar for C O and then we will have 3 into 0 for this is for hydrogen is 0. So, if you substitute these values 74.9 for methane then for water 286 plus Q and H F naught for carbon monoxide is 110.6 then Q is calculated to be 250.3 kilo joule per gram mole. Okay. So, if it is positive that means, reaction is endothermic and energy is absorbed here. Okay. So, if we consider a reverse reaction from left to right from here to here, then result will be like Q is equal to minus 250.3 kilo joule per gram mole. The energy is released and the reaction is exothermic. Right? So, here in the chemical energy storage systems that means thermochemical energy storage system, the endothermic reaction is called reformer and exothermic reaction is called methanation. So, you can see this plant here it looks very complicated, but it is not so complicated. So, this is the primary heat source and steam generator is here and we can produce electricity by using this cycle. Right? So, now if we have 
excess energy then that can be used to promote this endothermic reaction and we can store it in a tank okay and then when there is a demand then this can be expanded and we can promote this exothermic reaction to produce the heat and that heat is enough to run a picking turbine and we can produce electricity right and then finally this products can be stored in a separate tank so here we need to have storage tanks as well as reactors so when we have excess energy we can promote endothermic reaction and we convert this to the reactants like carbon monoxide and hydrogen at high pressure and then when we need to utilize the heat then we expand it and we promote the exothermic reaction and we produce the heat and that heat is utilized to exchange with the working fluid and then we can expand the turbine and we can produce electricity that's how it is demonstrated and also we can elaborate here during low demand period some heat from primary heat source diverted to reformer to convert the products of reactants and the products are then stored in the vessel at high pressure and at ambient temperature so during high period demand the reactants are fed to the methanator and generated heat is used to run the peak turbine and in methanator reactants are converted to products and then stored for later use so i've already demonstrated how it works and how this energy is generated during the exothermic and then how this energy is utilized during the endothermic okay so turn around efficiency of this kind of plant is about 85 to 90 percent so we can summarize what we have discussed today we have introduced the concept of various energy storage schemes primarily in this lecture we have discussed about thermal energy storage system which includes sensible energy storage latent heat energy storage system and thermochemical energy storage systems and also it is found that the efficiency of the picking turbo generator is low because of variable inlet conditions in case of thermal energy storage systems and the use of low temperature saturated steam small size and absence of free rotor heaters sensible heat storage systems associated with heat capacity of the storage medium and latent heat energy storage system associated with sense of phases and energy density is higher in case of latent heat energy storage systems compared to sensible heat energy storage system i hope you have got an idea about different schemes and at what condition these schemes can be employed for power generation purpose so thank you very much for watching this video thank you Thank you.